Have you ever imagined what it means to be strong and courageous, even when faced with the most terrifying situations? Picture yourself standing tall, unafraid, even as the world around you trembles. This isn't just a hypothetical scenario, but a divine command from a verse that has inspired millions. Joshua 1, 9 from the Holy Bible. What does it truly mean to live by this verse? What depth does it hold? Today, we will delve into the profound meaning of Joshua 1, 9 from the Holy Bible. The verse Joshua 1, 9 states, Have not I commanded thee? Be strong and of a good courage. Be not afraid, neither be thou dismayed. For the Lord thy God is with thee whithersoever thou goest. This is a powerful verse, isn't it? It's from the book of Joshua, which is nestled in the Old Testament of the Holy Bible. This verse is an assurance, a command, and a promise all rolled into one. It's a timeless piece of wisdom that has given comfort and strength to countless people over the centuries. Now just imagine these words were first spoken thousands of years ago, yet they are still as relevant and powerful today as they were back then. It's truly remarkable, isn't it? So what is this verse really saying? What does it mean to be strong, to be of good courage, and to not be afraid? Let's dissect and discuss this verse phrase by phrase. The first part of the verse is a question, Have not I commanded thee? This phrase serves as a reminder and a reaffirmation. It's God speaking directly to Joshua, the newly appointed leader of the Israelites, following the death of Moses. But let's not rush past this without truly understanding it. God isn't merely suggesting something to Joshua. No, this is a divine command, given with the authority and weight of the creator of the universe. To grasp the significance of this, let's dive a little deeper into the background. Joshua is stepping into some pretty big sandals here. Moses was a monumental figure, the man who led the Israelites out of Egypt, who received the Ten Commandments directly from God. And now Joshua has to fill that role. That's a daunting task, to say the least. But here's the thing. God doesn't just throw Joshua into the deep end and hope he can swim. He gives him a command, a guiding principle to steer his leadership. And it's not just any command. It's a command that carries with it a promise, a reassurance and a mission. The phrase, have not I commanded thee, is loaded with implications. It's God telling Joshua, I have given you a task. I have entrusted you with a mission. But it's more than just an order. It's a reminder that God himself has given this command. It's a divine directive, not a mere human suggestion. Now imagine being in Joshua's position. You're tasked with leading an entire nation and God himself is giving you a direct command. That's not something you take lightly. It's both humbling and empowering. This question then is not just a question. It's a divine mandate, a celestial charge. It's God saying, I have given you a task and I expect you to carry it out. Not because it's easy, not because it's convenient, but because I, your God, have commanded it. This shows the seriousness of God's command and sets the tone for the rest of the verse. The next phrase is, Be strong and of a good courage. Be not afraid, neither be thou dismayed. Diving into this powerful exhortation, we must understand the essence of strength and courage in a biblical context. Being strong does not merely imply physical strength, but it also encompasses mental and spiritual fortitude. It's about having the resilience to stand firm in our beliefs, even when the tide of the world is against us. Courage, on the other hand, is not the absence of fear, but the determination to press on despite it. It's about rising above our fears and doubts, stepping out of our comfort zones and facing challenges head on. In the biblical sense, courage is intertwined with faith. The courage to follow God's guidance even when it's difficult to comprehend is a testament of true faith. Now let's look at the second part of the phrase. Be not afraid, neither be thou dismayed. Fear and dismay often creep into our hearts when we face adversity. Fear, in this context, refers to the apprehension or dread that can paralyze us. This may, meanwhile, refers to a sense of defeat or hopelessness. God's message here is clear. We should not let fear or dismay deter us from our path. Remember, fear and dismay are not just feelings. They're also spiritual battles. When we are afraid or dismayed, we are essentially doubting God's power and goodness. But God reassures us in this verse that He is with us, ready to help us overcome our fears and dismay. This phrase then serves as a rallying cry for believers to be spiritually strong and courageous. It's a call to face life's challenges with unwavering faith and determination without giving in to fear or dismay. 
This encourages us to be steadfast and resolute in our faith, regardless of circumstances. The final part of the verse is, For the Lord thy God is with thee whithersoever thou goest. Diving into this phrase, we find an assurance that's both comforting and empowering. It's an affirmation of God's unwavering presence, an assertion that He is with us no matter where we go or what we face. Let's unpack this further. The phrase begins with, For the Lord thy God. This is a direct reference to God, highlighting His omnipotence and His personal relationship with us. It's not just any God we're talking about here. It's thy God, your God, my God. This emphasizes the personal nature of our relationship with Him. Is with thee, follows, and this is where the reassurance really shines. It's a reminder that God is not a distant entity. He's not far away, watching from a lofty perch. No, He's with us. Right here, right now, in every situation, every circumstance, every joy, and every sorrow. He's not just a spectator. He's a participant in our lives, whithersoever thou goest. Now this is a phrase that's a bit old-fashioned, but it's also incredibly profound. It means wherever you go. There's no place, no situation, no circumstance where God's presence doesn't extend. Whether we're in the heights of joy or the depths of despair, whether we're on the mountaintop or in the valley, God is there. He's there in our victories and in our defeats, in our laughter and our tears, in our confidence and our doubts. The beauty of this phrase is that it doesn't just promise God's presence, it guarantees it. It's not conditional. It's not dependent on our worthiness or our actions. It's a promise that's as steadfast as God Himself. So when we read, For the Lord thy God is with thee whithersoever thou goest, we're not just reading words, we're receiving a promise. A promise of God's constant companionship, His unwavering support, His steadfast love. This part of the verse reaffirms God's constant presence and support. To summarize Joshua 1, 9 is a powerful verse that speaks volumes about faith, courage, and the omnipresence of God. This verse from the Holy Bible, found in the book of Joshua, serves as an enduring reminder of God's unwavering support and presence in our lives. Looking back at what we've discussed, the verse begins by emphasizing the importance of being strong and courageous. This is not just about physical strength, but rather a call to inner fortitude, to have the resilience and the willpower to face any challenges that come our way. It's a reminder that with God by our side, we can overcome any obstacle. The verse then goes on to instruct us not to be afraid or dismayed. In our journey through life, fear and dismay are emotions we all encounter. They can be overwhelming, paralyzing even. But Joshua 1, 9 reassures us that in the face of these emotions, we need not give in to them. Instead, we can stand firm, knowing that we are not alone. The last part of the verse provides the most comforting assurance of all. God is with us wherever we go. This is the heart of the verse, the promise that no matter what we face, no matter where we find ourselves, God is there. He is not just a distant deity, but a close companion, a guide, a protector. His presence is a constant, a certainty we can always rely on. In essence, Joshua 1, 9 is a verse of empowerment, of reassurance, and of divine promise. It's a verse that echoes in the hearts of believers as a reminder of God's unending love and support. Remember, these teachings are not just for the hard times, but for all times. The strength, courage, and faith called for in this verse are qualities we can cultivate in our everyday lives, making us not just better believers, but better individuals. If you want more of this content, please like and subscribe to my channel. May God be with you. God bless.